Hello everyone, welcome to another 3D Total interview. Today we have Diana, also known as Raids Art on social media. Diana is an illustrator from Germany and her art is amazing, bright and vibrant with a strong use of light and color to tell the narrative and story of her characters. She's had her works published in multiple books and multiple different illustration projects, but today we're here to talk with Diana on her upcoming book with 3D Total, Golden Hour. So thank you, Diana, for being here today. I'm so excited for this interview. I'm excited too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Before we just begin, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Tell us about your artistic background, how you became the artist you are today. So um, I started my artistic journey a long, long time ago, like most artists. I was really big into drawing when I was a preschooler. I used to draw all the time especially with my twin sister, Leffy. Uh, we used to draw a lot of cartoons and like really weird characters, like monsters with weird designs and like creepy aesthetics. And then in school, we started to draw more comics and actually we took some after school art classes. So every Tuesday after school in primary school, I went to like a, a crafting class. So we, where we made like sculptures and drawings and paintings, for, like different materials. So that really brought me closer to art as a craft. And then during high school, I decided to uh, kind of focus more on drawing portraits. And I actually took art as like a higher level subject in my IB course. So I was uh, focusing on that as well in high school. And I also knew in that time that I wanted to make it into a professional career because it brought me so much joy and I just love drawing. I was drawing every day. And so um, I decided to study art or design. In the beginning, it was just art. And I actually applied to a couple of universities after school, and I was declined at every single one. <laughs> and I was really, really heartbroken. I actually got some really harsh feedback from the professors there that looked at my portfolio. I guess, you know, digital art at the time, like my digital art at the time was not the best. And I feel like German professors are not fans of digital art anyways, so I wasn't accepted anywhere. And um, that kind of really distraught me, distressed me, if you can call it that. Um, and so I had to wait another year to apply again. Um, but I changed my plans because I thought um, I would maybe focus a bit more on what these professors wanted to see for my portfolio. So in that time, when I was around 18, 19 in that time, I started drawing more like with natural, uh, how do you say, traditional tools. Uh, with uh, watercolors, inks, and charcoal pastels uh, to kind of make a portfolio that these art universities would like to see. So my my art changed a bit in that time, but I still made like my digital art on, on the side. And I was actually accepted at every university the year after I, uh, the first year I applied. So I had the, um, how do I say, oh, excuse me. So I had the choice to actually go to Dessau where I'm studying now. So I studied integrated design as a bachelor uh, and I finished that, I think two years ago. <laughs> and I'm currently studying my master's degree also in Dessau. So I'm actually doing my thesis next semester, but currently I'm still in my studies and just um, drawing on the side and being making my professional illustration project as well. That's like, so like I said, it's so inspiring to see you, you're still a student and you're still working, but you're also doing this full time and you know, you're able to balance everything and manage everything is so like inspiring and you've come such a long way, like you said, um, still thriving. I know it must have been difficult to like keep pushing forward with digital arts, even when like, you know, there was a stigma and you know, maybe you felt like people judged you you know it's it's kind of difficult especially I, I i totally understand but it's so amazing to see that you kept moving forward and like now you are here where you are today like you know posting your art online and you're finally releasing your art book so that's honestly so amazing uh you mentioned a bit about like your inspirations but can we talk more about like get more specific can you share more inspirations be more specific maybe like artists you admire or what type of movie that gave you the aha moment can you tell us a bit more about that mm -hmm. so when i started out my main inspirations were basically artists i saw on deviant art so many digital artists 
including Yume, Loish, uh, Anna Dittmann, and Sandra Winter. Like these are all artists that are really into portrait illustration. So I kind of tried to copy some of their art styles and kind of to find my own. So I kind of looked at their own their own artistic process and how they drew. And um, so basically, for example, you may had some time lapses on her YouTube and I tried to uh, emulate that what I saw on her workflow in my own. Uh, so it kind of I developed my style by looking at these artists. Um, but for now, so that so this was back then. But at the moment, obviously, my biggest inspirations are all the artists I follow on social media. There are so many. I can't list them all. But uh, it's just so inspiring to see their work every day on my phone. And um, I'm also really much, very much inspired by animated movies and by movie soundtracks. I basically listen to soundtracks all day. So that brings me a lot of inspiration as well. And my biggest inspiration, I would say, has to be my twin sister because she was such a huge inspiration to me. And we started drawing out together and we're still drawing together. And she just pushed me always to keep moving forward. I pushed her. So we always um, showed our artworks to each other and that was so motivating and it brought us so much joy. So she's definitely my biggest inspiration to this day. That hasn't changed. That's so cute seeing like uh, both of you support <laughs> each other and encourage each other. I think that's absolutely wonderful. You know, you always have your you're like uh what's the word like someone always there to encourage you even when you know as artists sometimes when we're alone in our rooms we feel like we start like questioning ourselves we start doubting but you know having someone who kind of gets you a fellow artist who's always there beside you to encourage you and to like inspire you it's kind of really helpful like you guys balance each other and i think that's amazing that's honestly so great <laughs> so uh speak really? yeah exactly so with all this, you've come such a long way, and now you're finally releasing your first art book, and I'm so excited. Can you tell us a bit about, oh, not can you tell us a bit, can you share the title, and can you tell us a bit about the title, how you came up with the name, the inspiration behind it, and what the title means for the book? So the art book itself is called Golden Hour, The Art of Raid. So... I think a really, really interesting factor in my work is that I love to play with light. So light is always a focal point in my illustrations, especially like strong, dramatic lighting. So I wanted to incorporate that into the title of the book itself. So um, golden hour actually refers to the hour, like this really golden uh, sunset vibe that you have right before the sun sets. And um, so basically when the sky turns yellow, golden and orange and red, so basically that color scheme. And I really think that's so beautiful. And that's also a reason why I love to experiment with dramatic golden hour lighting in my work as well. So I think this natural phenomenon perfectly um, describes my art as well. I absolutely think it does. Like when you mentioned the title of your book is Golden Hour, I was like, that that summarizes your work in a nutshell you know your work has this vibrant yeah. <laughs> very like bright expressive colors and i think it's one thing that really stands out in your work you know the characters i remember seeing the the image with the the lady with the the hat the sun hat and the light just filtering through the hat and like the reflection on, yeah. on her face and it was so warm and so bright and so gorgeous i honestly think it's a very fitting name and i i think it embodies your work like perfectly so yeah like i think that you did a great right job picking the name Thank now <laughs> so can you share a bit more about the context of the book like what can we expect from the book in we we, we know the book is obviously an art of book so it's gonna have your work it's gonna feature your work but what else is this book gonna feature mm -hmm. so it the first part of the book has some more general info on my creative process and my creative journey. So I explain more in depth where I came from, basically uh, how my style developed throughout the years, what tools I use, what my workspace looks like. So basically that kind of information is like the first half, not the half, but the first section of the book. And then the book itself is then split into different sections. It has a portrait section, a gallery section, and then a tools and techniques section. Um, so the portrait section itself, since I have created so many portraits, I thought it was so fitting to actually just have an entire section for them uh, so I can show them more in more depth. 
And um, I actually included some Draw This In Your Style challenges that I hosted. And I hope that some of my favorite entries will also be featured inside the book because I've made so many challenges throughout the years where so many talented artists have also participated in. And I thought it was really fitting to actually show their work as well because every single artist I see on social media is such a huge inspiration to me. So I kind of wanted to incorporate that as well in the book. And then for the gallery section, I have it, it basically... Uh, features a lot of my original arts where I have a focus on nature and also on my little yellow umbrella series where it has like the cinematic uh, shots or the cinematic painting series that I've made over the last couple of months. So that is included in that gallery section as well, as well as the tools and techniques section. So it's like a mix where I talk about how I work and then also show the uh, works behind them and kind of explain some of the tools that I made and um, some of the tools that I have that I utilize to make these works. So basically that's the main part of the book. And then also there's a tutorial section where I explain how I created the cover of the book and some acknowledges at the end as well. So that is basically like a brief overview of it, which is really similar to most of the art books that I own, but has some other, um, so, but it has some other sections as well in there. So it's like more fitting to my actual how do you say gallery? Yeah. That sounds extremely exciting. I love arts of books. It's always a very, always a very like nice way to learn more about an artist and kind of, you know, on, I always say that like on social media, we see very little of an artist's life and what they go through and how much that goes into making their work and building their career as an artist you know everything on social media seems so quick it seems so like easy it seems so fast it seems like uh you know it's just came naturally but it's literally just the tip of the iceberg and i feel like art books are the perfect way for artists to kind of share more of that for those who are interested because you know it's a, it's a perfect way to kind of like put all that and share it in one cohesive book right and i think that, that's perfect um so Speaking of that, you mentioned that you shared a tutorial on how you made the cover of the book. And I was actually going to ask, can you tell us a bit more about the cover and how the idea came to you and why you chose that cover? Can you just tell us a bit about the cover, the process and creating it, why you chose the idea? And yeah, just tell us a bit about that. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of brainstorming some keywords that kind of fit it, fit my work and Golden Hour was one of those. And so I thought I wanted to make a cover that also includes this Golden Hour light. And I thought it was really uh, fitting also to feature one of my original characters, Aira, on the cover. And since my art has always, or not always, but has a natural setting or natural theme most of the time, I thought it was really fitting to also include that in the cover. So the cover itself features my OC era in like a natural setting. Since I would love to celebrate femininity and nature in my work, so I thought it was really fitting to kind of have that on the cover as well. That's beautiful. Honestly, like I haven't seen the cover yet, but like already imagining it, it looks so pretty. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's definitely as gorgeous as like all your other artworks. And I'm sure everyone is gonna be just as excited for the book after seeing the cover. Um, but speaking about the book and speaking about the campaign, can you tell us a bit more about what we can expect from the campaign itself? Like other than the book, of course, what else can we look forward to? So the book itself will be launched with the Kickstarter campaign and it comes with several rewards that can be directly purchased and unlocked. Um, so some of the add-ons that come with the book that you can purchase are like assigned a four print of the cover and also some unsigned A5 prints, like a collection of three prints of my work and an, a sketchbook with uh, my work on, on the front. So I'm not sure how long the campaign actually lasts, but I'm really excited to for it and I'm really looking forward to seeing it all come together because I actually don't even know what the book looks like at the moment. So I'm really excited to see what they make of it and how it all comes together in the end. Definitely, you know, at the end of the day, when everything works, it's like, at the end of the day, when you finally get the book in your hands, it feels like this long journey. Like, you know, right now you're working on the book. I feel like projects like that don't feel real until you actually see it, right? Until it actually, like, it's in your hands and you're like, wow, this is, this is what I've been working on for the past, 
you know, few months or however long you have been working on that. Um, I wanted to ask you along this journey, what has been your favorite part of the book? What has been your favorite chapter in the book? And yeah, just tell us a bit about your favorite part working on the book and your favorite chapter in the book. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to choose a favorite chapter. Obviously, I've put so much time and effort into every single one of them. But I think perhaps the tools and techniques section is my favorite one because I love to showcase some of my newer works, which are in there, and also to show my workflow and mindset. So I really like to teach also the techniques that I use. So I put a lot of thought and effort into how to explain this. And I had so many, like, um, how do you say, plans, and I had it planned out, and then I kind of scratched those plans and kind of written, written it like in a different way, just to make sure that the techniques that I'm explaining actually make sense and are, um, are actually, how do you say, so that are actually some another artist can look at my text and then actually make the arts themselves with the techniques that I explain. So basically the tools and techniques section is definitely one which I'm really proud of, but also the gallery because it features some classics that I'm really super proud of. Like most of the work in the book is actually from 2020, 2021, because that was actually the time where I made it the most artwork. So most of the artwork is actually in the gallery section itself. So I'm really, really proud of that as well. So it's it's hard to say which chapter is my favorite, but probably one that showcases the most art and my techniques as well. That's experience. I'd say just coming up with the cover and actually seeing it all come together. Because I felt like until I had the design of the cover figured out, it was like a more of a abstract thing. Because it was all just in words. Like I was just typing everything and I didn't really have any visuals to go off of. But actually seeing that and actually having the cover done, I felt like so much of the work was done already, even though it wasn't. <laughs> but um, I felt like that was really a good point for me where I was really proud of it. I thought, oh, I've already made so much. <laughs> it's actually coming together and I can see this actually in front of me. So that was really, really nice. Definitely. that, that I definitely agree. Like, you know, um, you mentioned like how most of the work in your book are like old works or not necessarily old but like works from 2020 and 2021 i really like that about art books and how we can revive old work because like once again social media can feel so fast you post something today you feel like you have to post something new tomorrow and then sometimes the work that you were really proud of you put so much effort into gets like overshadowed by all these new posts and it's like it's so frustrating right but like in an art book a an artwork that you're proud of can live forever and ever in that book and I, that's one reason why I absolutely love art books and one reason why I'm so excited to have another amazing art book to add to my collection so looking forward to it. Um, thank you so much for chatting with us, we're almost done with all the questions already um, but before we leave can you give some general advice to beginner artists or any artist in general who would like to, you know, get to where you are right now. Maybe they're in the beginning of their art journey and they're trying to like reach somewhere, maybe even have their own art book in the future. What advice would you give to them? I think the biggest piece of advice I can give any aspiring artist is that you should note that every professional illustrator started out as a beginner as well. So my style has been in the making for 15 years. <laughs> I know I look a bit younger, but um, it's actually been in the making for so long, for a like really, really long time. And you shouldn't compete with people who are professional. You shouldn't compare yourself to others in that way, because I think it's really toxic and it doesn't really, how do you say, doesn't really bring you forward. Of course, when I started out, I also looked at artists that I'd admired, but I didn't feel like I couldn't be them, but I wanted to. I wanted to kind of learn how how to and how I could um, elevate my art to a level where I could be at the skill level that they are. So basically, just enjoy the process as much as you can. Because now that I'm a professional, I barely work on personal projects anymore. It's kind of sad, actually. But um, you should really treasure your work and also never throw old work away. <laughs> So sad because my sister actually had like a uh, folder with all her old, older artwork on it, like I think from 2015, 2017 ish, and she lost it sadly. And it was so heartbreaking for her because it's really important to keep in mind where you started and where you are now and to compare yourself only with yourself to see how much you've improved. So it's really, really important to treasure your work as it is right now and also treasure it how it was before. 
So that's basically the biggest advice I can give any aspiring artist. Perfect. Thank you so much. I love that. And once again, looking forward to the book. So excited to finally see it come together. And yeah, thank you so much.